And if we look at it from a philosophy or biology point of view, um, there are three fundamental assumptions to the, to the tree of life which are not really spoken about. The first is that the tree of life doesn't explain the origin of life. It simply explains the development of life if life was already there. Secondly, the origin of life is linked to the development of life. So there's two other uh, assumptions there. The first assumption is of origination probabilities, which is the tree of life assumes if you imagine from zero to one, right? So zero, no chance, one, 100%. The tree of life makes the assumption that life is extremely improbable, but not impossible. So we're close to zero, but we're not at zero. That's the origination probability. The second probability is the transition probability, which is anything can evolve to anything else over millions of years. All you need is time. That transition probability is close to one. And Darwin spoke about, uh, you know, how things can basically transform and they're flexible. So these three things, the the assumption about the origin of life, the assumption I'm saying, because there's no evidence that we have currently that you can get from organic, inorganic to organic. That's an assumption. Secondly, transition probabilities being close to one, origination probabilities being, being close to zero. None of these things can be proven and none of these things are justifiable. They are assumptions that they have made. Mm -hmm. And currently, as it stands, if someone was to challenge the tree of life using these three, um, a decent academic who is not dogmatically married to Darwinism would say, fair enough, I get these points, these points are well understood. But the Darwinists would outright deny that these are assumptions. They would outright deny. They would say these are, these are proven, right? Um, if you were to listen to some science popularizers, they would talk about the origin of life as if the origin of life was solved decades ago. Yet we get academics like Eugene Conin, we get the Miller-Urey experiment, we get all these academics and, and, and experts and what they've done and what we find from them is actually we haven't solved anything. We don't even understand what was happening in the beginning, right? I mean, currently, just to give you an example, Paul, I was talking to the Muslim academic Fareed Khan, who, uh, mashallah, he has a PhD from Cambridge and um, I've, um, you know, interacted with him on several occasions. Um, he said to me something very interesting. He said, proteins folding is a process that we see before our eyes, yet we cannot fully understand it. So how can we speak so dogmatically about something like the origin of the universe? Or to extrapolate further, the origin of life. So there has to be some epistemic humility here. 